In this video, I had the great opportunity and privilege of being able to interview Paul Miles. Now, if you don't know about Paul, uh, Paul's got a channel with over 92,000 subscribers and talks a lot about low and no content publishing. Now, I've followed Paul for the last couple of years and seen his growth, and I'm amazed at how much information um, and how transparent he is with all of those people that watch his content. So I'm really looking forward to this interview, and I hope you enjoy it. But make sure that if you do like these kinds of interviews, give me the thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're made aware of more videos that I create. So let's get into the interview now with Paul. Okay, so I'm very excited to have uh, Paul Miles join me on uh, the channel today and I'm, I'm very excited because Paul was actually the one that really started um, with, you know, got me going in my channel and uh, it's exciting to have him on board because he's got a huge channel. He's got uh, well over 90,000 subscribers now, has a huge knowledge of uh, low and no content publishing. And uh, Paul, welcome to uh, the channel today and I uh, really look forward to having a further chat with you. No, thank you for, for inviting me. It's good to, to chat to you about uh, KDP and, and online businesses. And uh, yeah, I've been watching your channel as well and seeing the, the good growth. It's, uh, yeah, it's good to see people start from the beginning and see how they build the, the channel up. And uh, yeah, it's good. good. Yeah, no, good I, to think, be here. Um, I think it was uh, a video that you did in January of this year that talked about your journey. And, okay. and what I've actually loved about your channel has actually been your transparency and and the way that you actually just open up about um, you know, different things that you've had during your journey, the struggles that you've had. But I've actually particularly liked following your journey because you actually started next to nothing with your YouTube channel um, yeah. and you had some sort of small growth happening. And then I've actually loved seeing that growth as it's traveled now, as I mentioned, to have over 90,000 subscribers is just fantastic. And you're so far ahead of any other um, self-publisher in the low and no content publishing space that um, uh, I'd love you know, seeing that growth. So congratulations on that as well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's... Um... Yeah, it's been, it's not been easy. It's been a hard slog, but I did, I made that commitment. I think it was in, the, well, I started this channel probably about mid 19 and I produced a few videos, but it wasn't until the beginning of 2020 that I thought, you know what, I'm really going to go for this. I'm going to, my idea was initially a video every day on no matter what. And then that soon became, you know, impractical, um, very difficult to do. So then I went to every, every other day, sort of three videos a week. And yeah, it's been a, it's been tough, but I was sort of so determined that that you know I was going to make it happen because I wanted to start a channel since about it's about two thousand and nine. I watched Gary V. I don't know yes. if you've seen yeah Gary V. And it's the Wine Library TV, and I thought, wow, this is great. I'd love to do what he's doing, um, but I just put it off and off like most people do. You know, I don't know what to do the channel about. Nobody would want to listen. But then I say, beginning of twenty twenty, I thought, do you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to produce the videos and, and see what happens. Yeah. And, wow. yeah, luckily it seems to take off. And I'm amazed that it has grown the way it has because, you know, KDP is a relatively small niche, I guess, when you yeah. consider all yeah. the different niches out there. And I thought it was just going to get to, you know, 20, 30,000 and then reach a ceiling and, mm. and that would be my mm. audience. But uh, now it's grown and, you know, grateful to everyone that subscribes. And yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Fantastic. And so what's a bit of a backstory about, about, what you were doing um, sort of leading up to doing low and no content publishing and starting a YouTube channel, because everyone's always fascinated to know what the backstory is, the, you know, the story yeah. to glory pretty much of uh, Paul Miles and, and, and how <laughs> and what you did to sort of get to this stage now, maybe what opportunities you took up to, to start the publishing as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if you know, my background was in actually in medicine. Yeah, okay. Yes, I remember hearing that a couple of episodes. Yeah. Ago, channels ago. yeah. So beginning of the 90s, sort of graduated from medical school, worked as a doctor, worked as a, a ship's doctor for a while. Um, then went into general practice. That's family, uh, family medicine, you know, if you're in the States. Yeah. And then came to Australia for a sort of spell for about five years, just over five years, worked in... Um, what they call areas of, of unmet need. Um, not quite the outback in Australia, but it was where Australian doctors didn't want to, to, to work. And that was the only option I had because for as an overseas doctor, they only, allow, um, they only allowed you to work in areas that Australian doctors didn't want to work in. Yes. Um, 
And then it was whilst I was in Australia initially that I decided, you know, this all this online business sort of stuff was something I wanted to do. So I got a book on building a website, Dreamweaver. And I learned that, just started right at the beginning of this book, went all the way through it and built a website. And it was a betting website on providing betting odds um, for various events. The problem with that was it then needed the, not the technology, the software, the technology to then sort of bring in different betting odds because I used to do it all manually and that was just beyond me. So I sort of gave up on that, came back to the UK, um, and then I, it was, let's see, it was around 2009, I started building websites to get income from Google Ads. Yes. Um, and that was building websites around various different niches. I had about 40, I think it was about 40 or 70 websites at one point, right. all running Google right. Ads, all in various niches. And yeah. there were daft niches like bathroom remodeling and <laughs> window design, that sort of thing. And that worked quite well until Google then sort of changed its algorithm, its search mm-hmm. algorithm. But it was quite good because it was then that I learned all about keywords yes. and search engine optimization, which, no you know, Years later on, it actually became useful in, in publishing yes. the book. Yeah. Um, but it also taught me a big lesson because I was getting a reasonable amount of income from that. And then it suddenly, literally, one day stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, just because of a change in uh, the search algorithms on Google. So it then taught me that, you know, you've got to be careful putting all your eggs in one basket yeah. and, you know, if you're making money off someone else's platform like Amazon, yeah. Google, that type of thing. You, you, you've got to ex- expect that could suddenly stop one day same for youtube as yes. well you know yeah. suddenly stop yeah. it might be a mistake they've made or, or whatever um and then uh what's it so that sort of stopped and around 2013 see i stopped working as a, a doctor in 2012 i sort of retired from general practice went to work for the ministry of justice which yeah. is part of the civil service in the uk and that was sort of a medical and legal type um work and then in 2013, it was sort of a, a knock-on effect from the financial crisis. Work suddenly dried up. So I went from f- working four or five days a week to one day a week. Yeah. And I thought, I've got to do something here to pay the bills. Yeah. So I came across this concept of writing short stories. Right. And publishing them as, as e-books. And yeah. they were short, I call them romantic stories. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so- I was, you know, pretty desperate. Yeah, and I thought, yeah. right, I'm going to start writing these stories. And I found a course, found someone that was doing a course online on, you know, how to structure the stories and everything. So I started just putting out these short stories, yeah. published about, I think it was about 15 books. Right. Um, and one of them actually became a bestseller in the, <laughs> okay. the US and the UK. Yeah, yeah, well. Wow. Uh, and that was, again, pretty quickly, that was bringing in a good income. I mean, back... Then it was around, I was getting about £3,000 a month. Yeah, wow. In dollar terms, was about US dollars which was like... Yes. Within like three or four months of doing this, which was good. And then Amazon changed their royalty right. schedule. Right, okay. yeah. Um, and they went to where they were paying you per page of book read. Yes. And again, suddenly the income just yes. dramatically dropped. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah. Um, and then didn't do much until I came across merch by Amazon. Okay. So I started doing that, yeah. doing the t-shirts. Yeah. Um, and that's a really, and that was 2017. It was a time of the eclipse. So I produced loads of these different eclipse t-shirts and stuff, yes. but that was a difficult business to be in. Cause it's very, it's a, obviously very visual and yeah. I'm not a graphic designer or illustrator, yeah. but anyway, it started with that. Then I got into doing secondhand books yes. on Amazon yeah. uh, FBA. Yes. Again, course on that started doing that and that was that was actually quite good you know you pick up books for and this has sort of been pounds and pence you know you books for 50p and be selling them for 15 20 pounds (laughs) this one i had actually was one i bought about one pound 50 and i sold it for 700 pounds (laughs) (laughs) that's a good that's a good get (laughs) yeah in the uk there's lots of charity shops um and where i was living near canterbury um, it's quite an affluent area, so the charity shops had really good books. Yeah. Um, but you, it wasn't a business you could scale. I would just no. drive all around the county and go to I had a sort of set book uh, shops that I would go to buy these books and I'd scan them there and da da da. People would look at you a bit suspiciously. You know what are you doing? <laughs> um, 
but you couldn't really scale it because there was one a limit to the number of shops two they had to you know you had to wait till they restocked with books and then there was all the traveling and packing and that um and i saw i think a combination of watching videos on that on youtube yeah. suddenly one day up came um a video on publishing low content books on kdp and that was by um kelly publish i don't know if you've come across no i haven't no i haven't heard of it no k e double l i publish yeah um and she had a course it was just a course on gumroad on how to do it and it suddenly clicked i thought well this is like a combination of merch and the publishing which i'd done already on kdp i thought wow this looks superb it's something i can just do it's not going to cost anything i can just upload books and as many as i want and see how it works yeah and it went from there slow start um until so i started with no content books yes. just doing you know patterned covers yeah yeah then went on to do sort of sports related log books yes and that's when things started to pick up in terms of sales and then it was about a year after i had been doing that then i suddenly thought of a particular design of a yeah. book yeah that's do you know what, this could work so i tried that on different mm-hmm. books and then suddenly yeah it took a big jump and really took off um yeah and over the last year i haven't actually produced that many books but the income i mean this is the beauty of kdp the income has just continued to increase because as you're making sales you're getting reviews your books are ranking higher yes um and the income increases so and i guess because you're spending you're spending a lot of time creating content as well through your channel it um there's only so much time in the day that you can actually do that and so yeah one of the biggest challenges yeah, people don't, yeah you you probably know but people don't realize that even with a youtube channel just producing one or two videos 10 minutes long yes take so much work yeah initially when i started the video was like 10 minutes to record quickly yeah. upload it yeah. a, a brief thumbnail and that was good yeah. but you get further into it i mean i've got a bit of a i suppose a perfectionist streak which is yeah. not good but it takes longer and longer because you're now researching more. You want to improve yes. the quality of the sound, the videos yeah. um, and the editing and you're experimenting. And yeah, each video takes longer and longer. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's taken up most of my time, which hasn't allowed me to do as many books as I'd, I'd, I'd like yeah. to do. Um, but it was good. The books allowed me to I quit my job completely last year. It was about June last year. Yeah. So it's just been over a month since I quit that. And yeah. Um, and it's good because if you're not working, then it gives you more time to put into your businesses and yeah. then you can scale up your, your other businesses even more. Yes, uh, yeah. And so with the publishing side of things, with those that are that are watching um, the interview now, what would you, you know, what would you say would be the top three or five tips that you think that uh, self-publishing could, could really do to stand out from the crowd? Because um, yeah. what we've probably both seen is that um, there's a lot of people that do the no content publishing and that's great to start off because you can get used to the design the uploading process getting keywords niche research but then once you become um uh better at those elements of it what what do you think people can do to sort of make that separation so they've got um digital assets being the books that can sell for longer and make them you know better better income over the journey yeah um I always like to look at what I call the evergreen books. Um, I like to look at the actual, what I call boring books. Yeah. Those are your um, low content books, um, like accounting ledgers, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that nobody really wants to look at. A lot of people want to go for the high ticket, sort of glamorous books, your yeah. coloring books, your puzzle books, your handwriting books, which are good, yeah, yeah. you know, can make a lot of money, but I think you've got to put in the work to really get to know the business and to know what works and to get a design concept. And that's the other thing I think is important is to learn about cover design. That's the composition, color theory, and what fonts to use. Um, I only use one font on my books. Um, I remember reading an article about just use one font, learn how to use that one font, and then be creative with it. Whereas people try and use too much stuff on their covers you know yes. they use like four different fonts and so many colors that don't work together and i think you know if you can learn the basics of, yes. of those things i said a composition color theory and fonts 
and work on getting just a nice, solid, attractive looking cover. Cause I think that's where most people fail. Yes. My, yeah. uh, people ask me to look at their books, to review them. And I'd say 99% of the time it's the cover designs that are yeah. Yeah. letting the book down. Um, and a lot of people don't get it. They're just creating something they understandably they think looks good, yeah. but they don't. And I think you've got to study books that are for sale on Amazon as well. I mean, I, I spent hours and hours going through all the bestsellers on Amazon. Mm. Um, and I think that's worthwhile doing, just going through all the different niches and looking at what sells because yeah. in different niches, there's different types of covers are, are expected. So you compare, say, a, cover, a coloring book cover to, say, an accounting ledger yes. cover are completely different yeah 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 different uh, audience aren't they you know that are oh, one, yeah um, and i think you've got to that's one of the big things as well put yourself in the mind of a customer someone who's who's buying because a lot of people have got to look honestly at their books and go would you actually buy that and mm. i think a lot would you know if they looked yeah. at it and said they'd say no yes yeah uh, and it's it's interesting as a creator like i probably like you I, I never had any um, design background or anything like that I've, I've just evolved yeah. as each of my books has sort of come through and complete that research and looked at what you know yeah the fonts that the someone's using or the color combinations or how it's put yeah. together and it's always a hard one because you can the cover can be amazing but then if someone clicks on your cover and then there might be grammatical errors in the description oh, yeah. then no one's going to buy it so and there's yeah. just so many layers that you need to get right yeah. to get that. So it's the, the, the cover, then it's the description, yeah. and then it's the reviews, or it might be yeah. a combination of cover and reviews to get them to click on the book. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, there's so many different things that come into play in regards to um, firstly being seen. And, and that actually probably leads me on to my next question. And I know that you've had a number of your best-selling books, which... Um, you haven't had to um, actively promote or, or advertise. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I had a question the other day um, saying, look, I don't want to advertise my book. Am I going to be successful in KDP? And I said, well, I can't really address that because there are a number of different things that come into play to be successful on KDP. But one thing I do know is that there is over 45 million books on KDP. And depending yeah. on the niche that you go into, um, things are, you know, in the in the area of sort of no content publishing where the barrier to entry is a bit easier to get into, um, yeah. then promotion is probably something you probably need to look into because you need eyeballs of customers to see your book and without, <sighs> and just expecting that Amazon will float your book to the top because you've published it. Um, yeah. You just have to be very mindful. Of that. So what's your positioning in regards to marketing and when would you use marketing and when do you think it's okay not to okay i i try and go for those niches that are getting sales but sort of quite low competition um early on when i start well i was into about the starting 2018 so it's about early 2019 and my aim from all these online businesses was to to quit my job that was the thing I, that was always the thing i wanted to do so I sort of calculated if I could create a book a day, how many of those books did I need to sell per month over the next 12 months in order to build up that income to quit my job? And all I was looking at was the ideal was if I could create one book just to make eight sales a month from that one book. Yeah. And so when it comes to bestsellers rank, that's quite, a, you know, I don't know what that would be as a bestsellers rank, 200,000 or something. Yes, yes. yes. If I found a niche where books had that sort of bestsellers rank, then I'd go, you know, and there wasn't much competition. That would be a book I would go for. And it's, a, and it's the thing is that's what a lot of people won't do because they go, oh, no, I want to go for that book with a bestsellers rank of 400. It's far yes. too competitive, you know. Um, so a lot of my books were sort of very low competitive niches. Yeah. So they didn't need to run ads. But as a collection, they were all bringing in a lot of income. And then you, you always get, and it's like any online business and it's like the Pareto rule, you know, the 80, 20 rule, you're going to get a small percentage of your books that bring in the most of your income. And that's the same for me. Yes. I think yeah. About 10 books out of my 2000 and something books bring in most of my income. Yes. Yes. Um, now, when would I run ads? I'd run ads if I was going to go into a competitive niche. And it took me about two years before I started running ads. Yes. Um, yes. um 
and I started running ads on those books that weren't really making any sales. I thought, mm. right, I'm going to run ads on them. Um, mm. Some of them didn't work, but some of them did. And I was then able to stop the ads and they still made good sales. Yeah. Um, but early on, you know, if I was going to have started, I had produced some books. I mean, I think six months ago, I produced a comic book yeah. um, one and I started on ads with that yes. straight away just because yeah. the, the competition was, was so strong. Yes. Uh, and even with ads, there's no guarantee you're going to be successful. Because, again, there's so many different factors. You know, yeah. what keywords have you used? What your c- cover is like? And even then, you may have something you think is perfect. And yeah. for whatever reason, the algorithm just doesn't pick up your book. Yeah. I, I don't know. No. Um, and that's another problem I think most people have. They think it's a, it's a recipe. You do this, do this, do this, bang, that yeah. guarantees success. Because even if you do things perfectly, you're still going to get books that just disappear you just yeah. don't find them. yeah you know you look for them and they're not there yeah and there's nothing yeah. to explain it i mean i remember i did a whole load of not whole load it was about 20 guest books this yeah. was early on i could never get a single one of them to rank even yeah. even when i run ads on them i yeah. think i run ads on one of them still couldn't get it to rank no no <laughs> no, no i know and it, and that's the that's the challenge isn't it and i know that i've faced similar things with my books where I've got some books where I really didn't think though, I mean, I did the best I can with creating the book, but I wasn't really sure how they would go and they've actually gone quite well. And other books that I thought would be yeah. fantastic have never stuck. And, and I've might've run ads. And then if the moment I turn the ads off, they just disappear again. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a, it's a challenge. Um, and, and with that, the sort of lead on question would be, and I've, I've created a video. I know you've recently done one about your journey over three years. Um, and I created one about my first three months on KDP and the challenges that I had. Um, what, what could someone that's new to KDP really expect in their first three months? Because I know that there's an expectation. You're right. They create a book and it will sell. But yeah. what would be, you know, realistically an expectation in your first three months of KDP from your experience? Well, I think if you're starting out, as you said, just creating the, the, the no content books is the way to go because you just need to get used to that process of, of creating the books, you know, writing your titles out correctly because that is another thing as well. People don't do their titles, subtitles correctly in terms of spelling mistakes, yeah. poor punctuation, no capitalization, which if English isn't your, your main language, it's difficult to pick up on that. But if English is your main language, you know, from the US or whatever, Australia, the UK, that's something you just see straight away. You know, it's just bang. Yeah. You just go yeah. past it. Um, so expectations. Well, you're going to be starting off with no content books, which is, is competitive and it's difficult. I think, you know, in the first few months, if you're doing that, you're probably only going to be getting a few sales. Yeah. Yeah. Really. To be realistic, yeah. you're probably only going to be getting a few sales. I would probably for the first month just stick with no content books, just publish, you know, quite a few of them and then look at the, I like log books. That's my, my big yes. thing. That's where yeah. I made all my money from log books yeah. Yeah. because they're, they're in demand. You know, I'll use the accounting ledger as a, an example, still in demand, you know, the, the demand will be there in, few years time compared yes. to now whereas you know to think some coloring books they'll go out of fashion into fashion um so yeah that would start on the log books and i think if you pick log books that are not in highly competitive fields you know i think you could be it's difficult to put a figure on it but i think you can make decent sales within a month or two yes. of doing that yeah and mm-hmm. it's the, the the non sort of um non-sexy kind of areas that you've got to get into isn't it and yeah yeah, you see see plenty of um, unicorn coloring books and uh, you know all that, but yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the ones like the as you said, like the accounting ledgers, or it might be a, a book for a mechanic or or something like yeah. that, which is just yeah, exactly very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, remember it's a, it's a story that always stuck in my mind. I mean, I don't know if you have them in Australia. Cat size in the road. Yes, 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 yeah. And it was the inventor of the cat size. And I think he was, I don't know if it's from the UK or not. I remember it was, this was in the seventies. For some reason it just struck me. And he was like a multi, multi-millionaire <laughs> from inventing the cat size. Yeah. You know, everything that people drive over, it's yeah. boring, not sexy at all. And yet yeah. such in demand. You look at all the roads and yeah. I know. The reflectors like the in the middle of the road. Well. <laughs> Keeps yeah, people like safe, but you, yeah, you don't even think about it. So 
Yeah, yeah. Like for the cat size of the KDP, you know, the <laughs> real boring, non-sexy niches. And, um, and you know, as a collection of books, you'll soon build up a, a good income with that. Yeah. And then once you've got used to that, then start looking at the, the more competitive books once you've learned about yeah. or got used to the, keyword, the concept of the keywords and what's working. Because you, when you're creating books, you need to be experimenting with the, yeah. the keywords and what works yeah. for you. Yeah. I mean, I came, you know, you've seen my videos. I come up with my own formula of what yeah. I do when I'm looking at keywords, which has worked for me. And yeah, and I teach um, that. There's no one model fits all is there there's you know everyone's sort of got a little bit of a you know as a probably a whole is a you know a 70 80 percent sort of fit of the modeling that we sort of do with key re, re, keyword research but there are different variations which you can have success with so you shouldn't always just think that the one one size fits all niche niche research oh. is the only way to go um yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly because yeah. you've got tools out there that you can use as well you know your publisher rockets helium tens where you can then find out what the actual search number, well, an estimate of what the actual search numbers are on Amazon, and then you can use that. But yeah, there's no one fix thing, because I'm sure, you know, if you're doing this for a number of months, you'll soon start to pick on bits that you're doing that yeah. work, and then you use that and, you know, and get your edge in the market. And it might be something, a particular font you use, or a particular keyword you use, or the way you use the keywords. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and sort of the final question about the, the KDP um, book creation process is that what, what do you think the key mistakes that sort of people make um, when they're first sort of starting out as well? And what, what, you know, if you had your time again, if you were to rewind the clock two or three years back now and you had a fresh account, what would yeah. you have done differently than you would have you know, I've obviously you've learned a lot over the time, but what would have you potentially done a little bit differently? Um, God, okay. First of all, I would look at it from the customer's perspective. Yeah. Uh, myself included, and I think a lot of people do this, they publish books in their own sort of pet interest because they yeah. think, I'm interested yeah. in this, I'm going to produce a book in that, everyone will, will love this. Yeah. And they don't. Um, and also the design of the cover, you've got to you've got to look at it from a customer's perspective, and just go onto Amazon, see yeah. which ones are selling, because the, the the market's telling you what people want in that yes. particular niche, yeah. and use that rather than think, you know, I've got something really special here that I love. People are going to love this because invariably they don't. Um, yeah, uh, you know, you may be lucky. You may be lucky. Um, what yeah. else? Um, well, we covered the going. I think people start off trying to attack the the, the glory niches, yeah. the, the big ones, like the coloring books. I think that's that's a mistake if you're starting out because um, unless you find a really low competitive niche, you're probably going to have to run ads on them. Yeah. Uh, and, and the problem is a lot of people's expectations is, you know, can I, I've got a $100 budget, can I do this? Well, you can work out if you look at the best-selling books, say on a coloring book niche, see the number of sales you need to get and you can extrapolate that backwards to how much you're going to need to spend on ads and probably for a coloring book you're going to be looking at you know a couple of thousand dollars a yeah. month at least yeah. i would have thought yeah um, and that's the that's the thing isn't it, that with this line of business people always like that that the instant gratification of getting income coming in straight away and yeah. unfortunately because of that and because of you know you and i would have seen it a lot where there's um, people that are making thousands and thousands of dollars per month, or they're, they're, they're saying they do anyway. Um, and then there's that expectation when they people start that that's going to happen to them. And then because they're not, and they're, because they're putting the pressure on themselves and thinking, well, I want to quit my yeah. nine to five job, then they might start doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing. And then they compromise their account. Yeah. Yeah. So all those sort of things come into play as well, which, um, yeah, you've got to think as a long-term proposition, don't you, with publishing? Definitely. Yeah, because I try, I say I tried a number of things, online businesses, and um, you know, often like the merch by Amazon, I gave up on that really probably after about six months. But with the books, I said, look, I don't care if I don't earn a single dollar from this, I'm just gonna fully commit to it for at least a year. And I had the same mindset with the YouTube channel as well. Yeah. I'm just gonna produce videos for a year. I don't care what the growth is in the audience, the income is, I'm just going to do it and then see what happens. And I think you've got to do that with books as well, because as you say, people put too much pressure on themselves and 
they're after earning money too quickly. Um, yeah. And there's not many online businesses, the ones that the proper ones that, you know, will give you that income straight away. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've seen a channel income school. No, I haven't heard of that yet. No. Um, they they have a business model of creating websites, creating content on their websites, and from there making money from ads, selling products, um, similar to building a YouTube channel, I guess, but in, yeah. in website form. And on that channel, again, they promote, you need to be doing this for at least two years before you're going to see a decent income. And I think, yeah. you know, if you've got that outlook in books, take the pressure off yourself, do it to enjoy it, the creative process, yeah. learn it. And I think, you know, in the end, you're going to yeah. have some success. Absolutely. And I've got people that started creating books when I started the YouTube channel. Um, and it's always good to hear from them. And, yeah. you know, those that are still watching the channel, still creating, are now making, well, making more sales than, than I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good to see. It's good well, to a, sign see. Of a, a sign of a good coach is when their students become better than they are. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you and I are able to make people better than what you and I are, well, we're doing the good job. So, yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and you, I always get, the, I always get the, the, the occasional comment that, oh, you're, you're rubbish. My mate's doing KDP and he's making this amount. And I go, well, Okay, uh, look at Alex Ferguson, the manager of Man United. <laughs> he never won the World Cup. He never won the. He created the best manager. So. Yeah, that's right. I know. I know some of the some of the best coaches in the world aren't necessarily the best. They weren't the best athletes themselves, but they yeah, know yeah, how to get yeah. the best out of their out of their students yeah. or out of their athletes. Um, yeah. And so, just to sort of finish up with Paul, what's the next step for you? I know you've. Um, You've obviously, you've done extremely well with your channel and I love seeing all your videos that you, you, you bring out. As I said, I've, I've loved it from the beginning because you're very transparent um, and honest yeah. with all the information you provide. But, but what's the next step for you? Because, um, you know, you've, you've now closing in on 100,000 subscribers, but uh, what's yeah. your journey or what, what do you foresee happening over the next couple of years for you? Yeah, well, I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to um, still concentrate on the YouTube channel. Yep. I'd like to create more content at the moment. It's about a video a week, but I'd like to up that to about two videos a week. Yep. Um, and I'd like to uh, expand the, the depth of the channel, um, look at, you know, different um, online money-making ideas, you know, yeah. particularly in the print on demand. Cause I'm a lover of digital inventory type yeah. businesses because they're so cheap to produce and they sit there and can produce a, a passive income. Um, and I'd like to also, I'm getting a lot of questions now about building a YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'd have a lot to offer on that as well. Yeah. Um, the trouble is that they say this, you fall into the trap of producing content for your audience yeah. and, you know, you're going for the views and all that type of thing. And, and I remember at the beginning saying, nah, that never happened to me. I just <laughs> love to have 100,000, you know, <laughs> subscribers. And I'll create content on all different things. And then, yeah. but you see, to get sort of trapped. Um, but it would be like nice to increase the depth, maybe produce more videos per week and on, you know, maybe a KDP one per week. And then maybe another video on other business ideas, maybe YouTube, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, I certainly want to do a course. That's something I'm working on. Yep. I think you're absolutely um, right. Like if you had content yeah. that, like, as you said, the diversification of what, what you do is so important because if, mm -hmm. if the, if, and I've had a few questions recently about, well, Romney, what do you think about um, if, is there, is there potential changes coming up with Amazon that could limit the ability for people to upload for free? And they, if they wanted to make a change, they could say, well, for every upload, it's going to cost you ten dollars, and so that would yeah, stop yeah. multiple, you know, people that are bulk uploading oh, fifty books a day. Or so yeah, that yeah. barrier to entry could change, or there's a, a change in the algorithm that may change up what they class as a no content book and a low content book and a high content book. Yeah. So we're at the mercy of what those changes are, and we're not sure what they could potentially yeah. be. And there's there's going to be changes. We don't know what they might look like in the future. Um, exactly. But I love your idea of making sure that whatever we do, yeah. we love KDP publishing, but to yeah, 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 diversifying. Yeah. So we yeah we don't have all our eggs in one basket, and that might mean yeah. that you put books um, through to 
other, you know, you might have an Etsy shop or a Gumroad shop, or you might have exactly. yeah, a YouTube yeah. channel or Ingram Spark or whatever it might look like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's all those other channels. I've not really looked at the Ingram Spark type of things, the Etsy. So maybe I think I'll probably start to look into those things as well and maybe uh, maybe do videos on those. But like a niche, you've, you've, you've got to diversify. And I think also you've got to diversify your your content as, as well, yeah. you know, as a content producer, even on a, on a channel, you've got to diversify your content because you, you, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, no. suddenly say KDP could stop tomorrow. Yeah. And then I know. You know and they look, you know, yeah. and then a channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd have to change up very, very quickly. On our channel. Yeah. You build sort of move, you know, cause there's other areas of publishing that I know about. And that's the other thing as well. I've thought about going into, cause I've published, I say it's about 15 written books. Yeah. So I know quite yeah. a bit about that as well. And it is slightly different than no content and low content books, how you target your keywords and, yeah. and that type of thing. Um, Trouble is, there's so many different. I'm, I'm interested in lots of different things as well, you know, investing and cryptocurrencies and that. And it's difficult to, I always find it difficult just to focus on. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> loads of ideas, lots of <laughs> ideas. It's, you know, well, if just you, implement. yeah, like a lot of things, if you don't focus on one task, you're not really doing, you don't, you won't serve it justice by doing it properly you yeah. end up doing a, a, yeah. a terrible yeah. job on something that you know you're splitting your time between five things rather yeah. than focusing on one thing but um and i enjoy teaching and mm. you know with kdp I've done, i don't know how many videos 200 and something um and you do get to a point where there's well there's only so much i can teach <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i know so yeah. much you can teach and um you know, it becomes harder and harder to think of, you know, producing something of value because I just don't want to produce any any old rubbish. I want to produce no. something that's of value. Yeah. Um, so looking at other things, you know, gives you more opportunities to to teach and other things and then maybe produce. I mean, ideally, long term, looking sort of five years ahead, I'd like to have a number of courses on yeah. various things, have a platform. Or, yeah. I don't know, you know, an academy type platform or, or something. But you see yeah. a lot of YouTube content creators go into that, you yes, know, that last absolutely. thing, you know, Ali Abdul and Matt Diavella. I don't know if you see those. No, those people. no. But the, the great thing about the YouTube channel is that you and you, you know, both of us look back on our first few videos of creating content and it's a bit cringeworthy, but then you you get to see you the growth that you have and the confidence that you build and and that all yeah. helps with your audience because you're engaging with them better yeah. but it also allows you to yeah, provide other content and courses because yeah. you have that confidence to be able to deliver in a way that connects with your audience so and and i've found that with you as well i know that i've got a lot from your videos just in relaxed your in regards to your relaxed nature and and how you okay. deliver that and it feels like you're right there helping you along the steps of the way, which I think is really important yeah. with the content that you deliver. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I just cringe when I watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, you're so self-critical. I mean, I look at them and go, oh. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, well, look, I just want to say thank you so much for um, for coming on to the channel today. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, You've, um, pleasure. Yeah, been, been someone that I, I look up to and I'll, I'll continue to yeah. follow them. Uh, I'd love seeing your journey and the steps that you've taken. And um, yeah, so thanks very much for, for coming on. And it's um, it's been great to have you on board. Yeah, no, my pleasure. No, it's, it was a privilege to be invited. I've only done one of these sorts of videos before. So no, no, thank you for inviting me. And uh, good to see your channel and, and your progress as well, which I'm uh, following very carefully. Oh, thanks, Paul. And look, um, for everyone out there, if you haven't, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't subscribed to Paul's channel, make sure you do. Help him get to that 100,000 uh, subscriber mark uh, and you'll absolutely love everything that he produces. <laughs> <laughs> thanks subscribe much. to yours as well. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. <laughs> no worries at all. No. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I really hoped you enjoyed that video with Paul. Um, There's a lot of information we covered from uh, low and no content publishing to diversifying the different streams of revenue you have, um, our YouTube channels. Um, but make sure that if you do like these videos that you um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And also remember, I do have my low and no content course uh, that is available for you to, um, to accelerate your self-publishing. So if you want to check that uh, course out, make sure you look at the description and the links below. <clears throat> So until the next video, look forward to seeing you then.